I don't know if I can maybe then uh, just immediately hand over to you to lead us. I don't know if you, if you want to do a PowerPoint presentation, you can take the screen. Otherwise, you know from the heart. Yeah, let me just cover um, the different initiatives, um, everyone. And thank you so much, Jasper. And I'm going to do it quite briefly uh, because I don't want us to, you know, um, I'm more focused on what are we going to do with what we've got. So uh, maybe firstly, um, I established the initiative a couple of years ago in 20, what was this, 2015, 16, um, uh, the Christian Consensus. Um, that was the first big initiative where over 2 million Christians signed um, support for um, biblical values for government, for the economy, for society, for schools, etc. So, uh, um, and that was a way to, to build unity among Christians uh, around the country, because we need to speak from the same page. Um, I also linked it to, in meetings with political parties at Parliament, um, I would say opposition parties, um, and uh, for them to support this, and even, you know, in a way, express unity in this regard, so that Christians and people around the country um, are, you know, encouraged by it, and then also respond in unity. So um, the whole idea with this is that if the majority of people in South Africa are Christians, um, it needs to be reflected in the political landscape, in terms of our societies, etc. cetera. So, um, yeah, so the whole focus is really about mobilizing the church, but it's not exclusive. It's about anyone who, who are, uh, you know, passionate about nation building, principled nation building, um, and uh, yeah, uh, being involved in, in transforming South Africa. Um, so, so there's still a Facebook group, uh, Christian Consensus in SA, that is still running, and it's really um, powerful in terms of how Christians are, are uniting. There's over 12,000 people there, and uh, you know, it's it's incredible actually. So, yeah, that was part of building a, a mass uh, support for a national cause. Not for myself, it's about a national cause uh, involving Christians in change. So after that, um, uh, we established Project SA, which is mainly focused on projects, initiatives in communities, rebuilding the walls, um, mainly focused on identifying the Nehemiahs, the Josephs, and the Esthers uh, and Davids. Um, the Nehemiahs are those who are actively involved in transforming communities. The Josephs are those who want to play a role in financing those initiatives. And the Davids and Esthers are the leaders that need to be identified in those communities. And we've been in a lot of places around the country with COVID. It's obviously uh, been restricting uh, the initiative, but it's still proceeding strongly. And we are working with communities. And there's been uh, some beautiful results already. Um, Cynical is just one example um, of where we've partnered, but there's lots of others around the country. Um, so, um, and many of that happens below the radar. Um, then also another initiative we've uh, started um, in combination with uh, Martinez Oosthuizen, um, Manny Bester, um, also uh, Theo and, and uh, Rwan's group, um, and a number of other Paul Coupes there, um, and a number of other leaders. Um, so we've, we've started that to identify a possibility of developing a food chain around the country. Jasper was also there at the meeting in Fixburg, where we had a central place, um, and we discussed that, uh, bringing farmers, uh, community leaders, bankers, technologists together, so that we can see what can we put together. So it's basically focused on, on a network, starting with food production, but eventually building a, a trading system that can function if the economy collapses, it should be um, operational. Uh, but even before that, and something that can assist especially Christians, but not exclusive to Christians, all those who want to be part of rebuilding the nation, rebuilding especially communities, um, you know, um, and, and, and um, involved in the building a new financial system, in a sense. Uh, most of that has also happened below the radar. So we're still building connections. We've tested a number of these initiatives in Dan William. Citrus Dal in um, also in Lutrichard and also Botaville and so on. So 
and a number of other places, also in Durban, and we were involved with the crisis in KZN. Um, so uh, yeah, um, that's something that's that's emerging, um, it, but it's not fully operational yet. Um, and I think it will be part of our discussions. Um, so um, then the other initiative was closer to the local elections. We established the Raising Righteous Rulers uh, because we are very focused on, um, you know, having electoral change um, and having independent candidates uh, stand um, representing their democracies or their uh, constituencies or communities directly. So the focus there is on direct democracy and participative democracy and actually negating the dominance of political parties. So it's not an anti-political party initiative. It's just to say, well, people need to be better represented in government, local, provincial, and national parliament. Um, and the whole initiative was to raise righteous rulers, those who are committed to standards and uh, um, yeah, those um, uh, identifying the right uh, leaders in communities so that they can step forward. Um, but it's a gradual process. Uh, we also do some um, you know, candidate preparation with the School of Governments, with Michael Louis and so on. And now recently we've established the Independent Candidate Association, which is uh, part of um, a body that will hold independent candidates accountable, but also empower them, um, especially with an eye on the upcoming uh, national elections. Um, and yeah, um, it's very significant. Um, I was part of the application in the Constitutional Court in 2020, where they declared the, um, the current, uh, um, what is this, um, voting structure and the whole electoral bill unconstitutional. Um, so um, with the ICA, um, we can literally um, declare the next elections unconstitutional if it still does not provide for enough inclusion um, of uh, independent candidates. So it's a strong body. Um, and in that way, we can really kind of push pressure on, on parliament to, to align their um, changes to electoral bill with um, the Concord's decisions. So um, yeah, that's a way to, to make sure that we move in the right direction. Um, yeah, and uh, just very recently, I've written a book on the economy, which is actually my field of expertise, um, on a new economic system for not just South Africa, but for Africa, and also how it can be developed in Africa to be taken to the rest of the world, an inclusive economy, um, uh, and very much embracing Ubuntu principles, which is very much aligned with kingdom principles. Um, and uh, the book will be published within a month or two, um, and I do think it's going to create an understanding and a framework for people to think differently about the economy. Because we have challenges with the kind of capitalism we have, or super capitalism, it's not working in Africa. But then Africans can't look to socialist models, uh, even though China might have some success uh, because of the centralized control of those economies. So um, this inclusive economy is a kind of a uh, um, uh, cutting right through the middle there and saying we need inclusive capitalism, but we also need to think more collectivistically um, about how we approach the economy as businesses, as government policy, as consumers, um, etc. So all participants in the economy and then create new opportunities through restructuring the economy. So in the book, I explain a bit of that. Um, yeah, so, so, so the key thing there is just um, you can have economic change, but only up until a point, um, you also need political change, um, you know, inclusive democracy. Um, and uh, those things complement each other. Um, yeah, but then put in place the alternatives on ground level, which is what I'm really uh, focused on, and especially for our discussions here. Uh, what do we start putting in place at ground level? What is already in place and what can we work with? So, uh, yeah, Jasper, that's in a nutshell any of the things I'm involved in. I'm a lecturer at the university, full time academic as well, but then, of course, involved with um, all these nation building initiatives. And really, uh, my passion is to activate the body of Christ, to get involved in the solution. And especially now, when we go through this wartime and the crisis that we're seeing, 
after the COVID. Um, you know, it's 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 serious situation, but it's the perfect time to to rebuild new structures uh, because you can't put you know new wine in old wine skins. So I'm really excited about where we're going. Um, yeah, and we, I, I, I walk this in faith. The strong thing just for me lastly is building relationships. I do think, um, very importantly, key people and God's people especially need to take the lead in this. But those relationships must be based on integrity and trust, biblical values. Thank you.